Exercise 15b, Matching and Allocation Problems. I have a small independent improv theatre troupe that need to assign cast members different jobs. Each cast member should be assigned to only one job. So we've got the cast members, Aisha, Colin, Josie, Ryan and Wayne, and the jobs are website, flyers, training, ushering and hosting. I've also listed here what each cast member can do. So the first thing is to indicate here is that this situation can be visualized using a bipartite graph. Bi meaning two, apart, apartite meaning apart. So we've got two columns that are apart. We have partially completed this below. We need to complete the bipartite graph using arrows and state who should do what job. You'll see that Aisha has three arrows and that corresponds to the three jobs she can do. We are going to do the same for all of the other performers. So we have drawn our bipartite graph indicating who can do what, and we've been able to see here all the different uh, jobs that people can do. So you start by finding who is there any job that only one person can do and then subsequently make eliminations. In this example, probably because it was poorly written by me, but I've got two people that can be added, can either do training or the website. If this ever occurs in an exam or a SAC, we would suggest that you would want to make a choice. So don't give two things. We for a, If we need to assign one person one job, make a choice. So you can either say training and website, or you could say the other way around. We would accept marks either way. We would not accept if you didn't make a choice. Example two, the improv theater that the troupe performer need to do some repairs. As they are poor improvisers, they need to do the work themselves. The jobs include building the stage or S, fixing the curtains C, painting the walls W, repairing the floorboards F, or sourcing new props, P. They each give an estimate of how long it would take them to do the job in hours. The information is in the table below. If each person is assigned one job, how long will it take to repair the theater, given that it needs to be fixed in the least amount of time possible? We shall assume that each job is done one after the other. So there are two methods of doing this. One, you can look at the table and use some logic. And two, there's the use of the Hungarian algorithm. We'll go by logic first. Let's have a look at each of the columns. I'm going to suggest that you want to go and have a look at the uh, who takes the least amount of time for each job. So for building the stage, the least amount of time here would be 11 hours in either Josie or Ryan. For fixing the curtains, Ryan does that the quickest with seven. With the painting the walls, it appears that uh, Colin and Ryan can do that the quickest. With the floorboards, the quickest would be Aisha, Ryan and Wayne. And for sourcing new props, the quickest people would be able to do that is Aisha, Josie and Ryan. So then what I would do is I would have a look at which job has the is the only person who can do it or like we've only circled one number and that's going to be curtains so ryan should definitely be doing curtains and he takes seven hours from there i can eliminate him from any other job from here we can pretty much ascertain who should be doing each of the other jobs So now that we've ascertained that the total amount of time it takes to complete all the jobs is 33 hours. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can get that same answer using a thing called the Hungarian algorithm. I would stress at this point, it is worthwhile knowing this sort of logical deduction method so that when you have to use the Hungarian algorithm when asked, you can always check your answers. The Hungarian algorithm is how a computer would do that level of deduction. We're going to start with these processes. The first thing that we do is we do the row reduction. What you do is you subtract the smallest number in each row 
from all of the other numbers. So identify the smallest number in each row. Three, four, three, three, and four. So minus every number in that row by that smallest number. Once you've subtracted all of the smallest numbers from each row, you then look for the smallest number in each column and you subtract that from each of the numbers. In this case, the smallest number from each column will be eight, four, zero, four, and zero. Once you've subtracted that, we now need to cover the grid with lines. You need to identify how many lines does it take such that the least number of lines can cover the most number of zeros. And when I say cover, I mean either going by this direction or alternatively this direction. So to get out your lines, and get out a straight line and see where you need to identify the least number of lines to cover the most zeros. So start with the columns or rows that have the most zeros and cover them with lines. I should also stress that when you are determining which rows or columns have the least number of zeros, you want to start with the column or row that has the most zeros and then each of the rows and columns that have the most uncovered zeros. If the number of lines, the least number of lines that you need is equal to the width or height of the matrix, then everything is hunky-dory, everything is okay. In other words, the fact that I've got one, two, three, four, five lines, and this is a five by five matrix, means that I can proceed to the next step. If I did not have to uh, have enough lines, if the least number of lines was smaller than the grid, it will never be bigger than the grid, it should be smaller than the grid, then I would need to do an extra step, which I call step 3B, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Since we do have the correct number of lines, we can now go to the next step. You can possibly hazard a guess, this is the sort of thing that confuses a lot of people doing the Hungarian method. Now that I have checked with the number of lines, I now need to assign people to jobs. So any person that has got a zero next to their name means that they are the person who is optimal for that job. So it might help to highlight those people immediately. We can then match this, uh, the numbers that we've circled with their actual times. It is interesting to note, of course, that in that last column, despite the fact that Wayne and Colin have one extra hour more so than their colleagues, they are still, consider, uh, according to the Hungarian algorithm, optimal to be able to do that job. So once you have gone and done this, what you just need to do now is the same process that we did earlier before with Hungarian algorithm and assign people to jobs based on who is the least number of people to do a certain job and eliminate accordingly. So we have reached the same answer as we've done before. Example three, draw a bipartite graph that shows all the possible choices for optimal time allocation. This is when we need to use that table that has all the zeros in it to be able to draw the bipartite graph. For that is the optimal time allocation. And so now we have drawn the bipartite graph. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see the situation if I couldn't draw enough lines in the Hungarian algorithm. So to do this, I've adjusted the number of hours that each person can do each job. 
So let's just say we were doing the same example before, but we didn't have enough lines. And to do so, what I've done here is example four. The cast members readjusted the amount of times they could do each job and made a new adjusted table below, and we'll need to find the optimal allocation. So all the hours have changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same procedure as I did before. I'm going to do a row reduction, column reduction, etc., so that we can see what needs to be done. Firstly, we need to find the smallest number in each row. Then we'll subtract that from each of the numbers. Once we've done that, we find the smallest number in each column. In this case, it would be 10, it will be 5, 0, 4, and 0. Now what we're going to do is we're now going to try to cover up the most zeros with the least lines. As you can see, we've only got four lines for our five by five grid. We need to generate another line. So the next step is to find out of all the uncovered numbers, identify the smallest number. In this case, it's the number one. We then subtract all of the other uncovered numbers by that number one. Then we take that smallest number we identified earlier and add it to any numbers that have been overlapped by lines. Once we do that, we now need to go and redraw the lines to see if we have got five for our five by five grid. And as you can see, we now have our five lines for our five by five grid. Now all we need to do is to identify who should be doing which job. Once we have identified who should now do each job, we just need to go back to the original table and add all of their hours together. And thus we have done our, our correct allocation. In this case, it would be 37 hours. So doing the Hungarian algorithm is something that you are required to be able to do, especially if you need to draw a bipartite graph to indicate the maximum optimal allocations for each person. However, don't forget to use your logic as well as uh, some basic numeracy to be able to uh, check your answers by looking through the original table.